In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the three new features in Elementor 2.9 Beta. It is Global Styles. That's a big one. The beginning of Global Styles in Elementor. Revamp Lightbox and more Lightbox options and custom link attributes. We're going to check those three out and what those all mean in this tutorial. My name is Bjorn Allpass in WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your customers. If you like that kind of thing, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're getting started on this video right now. So just yesterday, Elementor released 2.9 beta, and there's some new features, three big ones, and a bunch of tweaks. And the big feature is global styling. I made a global styling video using a third-party plugin, I think last month, and I, I predicted that Elementor would be adding this at some point. It's here even faster than I thought it would be. We now have what's called theme style, which is Elementor's term for global styling. We'll get into that in this video. There's a revamp light box and custom link attribute. So those are the three big updates in 2.9 beta. This is not yet in your public version if you have the public version of Elementor. And if you want to try out these new features, you can get the beta version of Elementor installed on your site as well. You just go to the website, log into your account, and click on the join beta link at the top of the Elementor account. I'll show you really quick. And you have to be logged in for this to work. So you log into your account and then click on join beta right up here. And then you'll receive beta emails just like I do. I'm making this video because I received their email with the new features. And when you use beta, you want to have this on a non-production site. So you want to have a dummy domain somewhere or a local website where you install this and play around with beta. If you want to install local, I recommend you use Flywheel. It's a great local option. I use it as well. There's a link in the card up above and the description down below to help you install local by Flywheel. It's free and you can have local websites, which are what I use for a lot of testing and development. Okay, so back to what we're doing here. Global styles, that's the big one. When we head into Elementor, into the Elementor editor, and we click on the hamburger icon over here, we have the theme style options link now. This is in beta again, and this will be in production at some point, probably in the, in the near future. So if you click on here, we can customize a lot of stuff. And this is just the beginning according to the release. So you can customize the background, typography, buttons, form fields, and images. And then anytime you add an element to any Elementor page, all these styles will be applied that you have here. So whatever you set in the images, those will be the defaults for any image you add to any Elementor page on that website, which is global. That's global styles, where you can change in one spot, it applies everywhere. According to the press release, what's interesting is here it says what well, the problem they're trying to fix. When you install any WordPress theme, it creates a layer of design, styles, and rules. This means that any new element you introduce to your site may inherit those style settings. In other words, global styles, and they're talking about the WordPress customizer or theme options that allow you to set those styles globally. And it says here a big problem is when users switch themes, those styles are not carried over. So you gotta basically restart and redesign when you have a new theme. And theme style aims to correct that problem by taking over the global design layer previously held by the theme. That implies to me that the settings you set here apply to things outside of Elementor as well. Because if they're taking over the styles applied by the theme, then they could be applying it to the entire website even on pages not created by Elementor. I could be wrong, I haven't tested it, but that's what it implies to me. So maybe, I haven't tested it yet, probably test it later on today if I have time. But that's where you find global styles. Under the hamburger icon, theme style, a lot of settings in here. Well, not a lot actually, a couple settings in here, more to come, and you'll be able to have global styles on your site. Now the next big change is the light box. If we go down to an image, let's say, let's say this one here, we change the link from none to media file. Now, if we were to preview this, we click on that image and it opens in a light box. And some new features you see here are up in the top right. We have a full screen option that allows us to go full screen. We have a zoom button where you can zoom in on the image and then pan around the image by clicking and holding. We can also zoom out. And this works for images, galleries, and videos, where we have those extra options. Let's zoom in, full screen. And we also have more settings to customize the appearance. If we go back to the hamburger icon, under global settings, the lightbox tab, 
we have these options to customize the light box. And like Elementor, everything's point and click. All the color changes are point and click. Just mess around a bit. You'll understand where all these features go. The coolest features, I think, are the inclusion of titles and descriptions for the images. So if these images have titles inside of the media library, so if we were to open this, we can set our alt text, title, caption, description right here for any image we upload. And that can be pulled into the Lightbox. So that can be part of the Lightbox appearance, which is a new feature with this release as well. If we go back to our release notes. Let's make sure we got everything in the, in the light box. See what they added, the zoom, the share buttons down the light box as well. You can go full screen and it all works on mobile. So that's fantastic. And we also have link attributes. Where'd those go? Here they are, custom link attributes. This allows you to add custom attributes to your links. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's find the link. This could be a link right here, this button. And we have the ability, when we click on the gear icon, to add a custom link attribute right here. So you would add the key, which is the actual parameter that goes into the link, and then the value after that. So you would add something like rel equals, or sorry, ref equals sponsored, which is a new link attribute that Google released last year that allows someone to denote a link as being a sponsored link. What this would look like if you're actually making this link manually is like this. If you built links before on any HTML, this looks very familiar. But the way Elementor wants us to do it is like this. So now if we update this and go to our preview and inspect this link, we will have, let's move this up so it's out of the way of my mic. Where's the link? There it is. We have ref sponsored added right here. And there's a lot of different link attributes you can do. You can add link attributes for Google Analytics to track events. So you can track when someone clicks on a link. You can have different link attributes for file downloads. You can have link attributes for lots of things. This Google link attribute and whatever it has for the key or the parameter name, that's what goes first in that field, followed by a pipe character and then the value. And if we go back to the release notes, Elementor, the guys over there give us a bunch of examples like here. And it says explicitly you won't be able to add on-click JavaScript-based attributes due to security reasons. On-click is a very popular thing. You're able to trigger JavaScript actions based on someone clicking a link, but that doesn't work in this case. And again, if you want to know more about link attributes, just Google them. There's a lot of information about them. But basically what you're doing is adding more information to the link to do specific things. What those specifics are will depend on what you're trying to accomplish. Either way, that's one of the new features in 2.9 beta, which will be released at some point in the near future. These are the three features that are gonna be shipping with 2.9 when it is released. And if at the very bottom of this page, there are a bunch of tweaks under more improvements, there's a whole list of tweaks also released in 2.9 and fixes and some deprecated things, things that aren't being used anymore. And next up, check out this video right here, which shows you how to do SEO right in the Elementor editor using new rank math features. This is something that Elementor may create in the future as well, but as of right now, they don't have it, and rank math is an awesome job. So check out that video. It'll make your Elementor SEO way easier than with Yoast. And make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. My name is Bjorn Allpass from the WP Learning Lab. Until next time, keep crushing it, and I will see you in the next video.